Uh, Michael Clark Duncan. I just wish he had more uh, scenes in this movie and rest in peace. He was so fantastic in this movie. And just every time you watch him throughout this movie, just your heart melts. Just uh, him explaining. You're just like, there's no like, what is he doing in this prison? There's no way he's doing what he's accused of. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? My name is James. My name is Blaze. And never have I ever seen the Green Mile. And when they happen in a place like this, that's the most unbelievable miracle of all. This is the story of a miracle. What happened here, where I work, on the Green Mile. The Green Mile is the story of guards on death row who are affected by one of their inmates that has a mysterious gift. James, this is your first time watching The Green Mile. We recently watched Shawshank Redemption, which is also directed by Frank Darabont. I feel like this was kind of his second outing. He did a Shawshank Redemption, then comes out with Green Mile. This is like almost version two. It, you know, it's <laughs> another Stephen King story. It's, you know, got Tom Hanks in the lead, who was originally supposed to play the main character in Shawshank Redemption, but couldn't do it because of, uh, I think it was Forrest Gump. So right. he's, you know, doing it as kind of like a favor, like he wanted to be in the original kind of version, loved it. And then it's also, I mean, obviously it's, they're also both in a prison, so they kind of have those similarities. But I'm really curious what you thought of this film. What'd you think? Well, first, I want to get into the supernatural element. I didn't really expect that from this movie. I, I knew that prison was involved with this movie, but I didn't know that it was going to have a supernatural element to it. So that caught me off surprise because it really kind of comes in out of nowhere. I'd say about an hour into the movie. It's a three hour movie. It's very long, but it actually went by really fast for me. I didn't enjoy this movie as much as Shawshank. However, that's not me down playing this movie whatsoever. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan, I just wish he had more uh, scenes in this movie and rest in peace. He was so fantastic in this movie. And just every time you watch him throughout this movie, just your heart melts, just uh, him explaining. You're just like, there's no like, what is he doing in this prison? There's no way he's doing what he's accused of. And uh, just when it finally you get the development that you've been waiting for in the true story, it hits so hard and just like he's so fantastic in this movie. I'm not sure if he won an Academy Award, but I remember I'm pretty sure he was nominated for the role at least, but this was a really fantastic movie and I did highly enjoy it. Despite how long it is, I normally hate anything that's even just two hours long, but uh, three hours and 10 minutes uh, seriously went by pretty quick and I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I have to say, you know, watching it just, I also had watched this for the first time and I knew, I did know a lot. I remember, I don't know if like, if this came out around the same time as like a mousetrap, maybe that, that's what <laughs> reminded me I of the mouse. I think it did or actually, they're not too I, far apart at least. Yeah. yeah, I thought it did. I just remember seeing a lot of commercials on TV at that time in 99 where like, they, they was a lot of spoilers about the kind of supernatural elements in the film. So I knew that going in, like, I'm pretty sure there's the scene where he's giving like breathing life back into that mouse, like brings the mouse back to life. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like kind of interesting to see that you, you didn't even know those supernatural elements when it was like, dude, that was spoiled so hard for me. So I would have liked to, you know, come in with, you know, not having the knowledge of like kind of what the film was about. But yeah, this film just really hits. I, I, I have to agree with you though. I really did love Shawshank Redemption more. And you know, I just recently rewatched that far never have I ever, but this like still watching this, I'm like, there, there's just a lot to really enjoy in this film. Like the story, I, I did actually really love all the supernatural elements. I kind of like Shawshank more because it doesn't have supernatural elements, but I thought that like all the kind of magic and mysticism and mysteriousness that's in this film kind of makes it feel more Stephen King, like really makes it feel like a Stephen King adaptation and you know, like it is. So I thought that that was really cool. Uh, really loved how the story kind of goes 
you know, full circle with, you know, how did Michael Clark Duncan's character, John, end up in prison? And then you kind of see this other guy who you start hating because he's just a dick played by Sam Rockwell. And then like to see that they're that they're, uh, you know, they cross paths at one point in time, just kind of really makes those moments like the kind of sad moments in this film, just even more sad. I like the book end of the film you know following tom hanks's character paul edgecombe and like his life and like how like it kind of has changed his life like meeting john coffee so yeah there's just there was a lot to love in this film honestly i thought it was just really really great honestly i, I wish i had watched this before now yeah uh sam rockwell also is just an actor i've watched in so many things just because my mom went to high school with him so she would always talk non-stop about him and uh, like, I think he's a fantastic actor and he's really good at playing absolute buttholes in movies too. Um, sorry, still try not to get his mom, or still uh, not trying yeah. to mess up our- <laughs> I appreciate if he used, yeah. I, I said dick, I don't, that might that might be too phallic. I'd appreciate if he used the word butthole instead yeah. of uh, uh, asshole. Yeah, I almost said oh, ass, shit. but I, like, yeah, ass is allowed, but just when you combine it with the word hole, that's where uh, you get uh, demonetized, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what's it called? Yeah, Sam Rockwell, uh, once again, fantastic, terrible person in this movie. Uh, his character is completely unlikable and uh, he gets the job done with his role. Uh, but what really makes it work, I think, is just Tom Hanks really trying to find more about Michael Clark Duncan's character of uh, coffee, essentially. Uh, that's his name, as he says, but not spelled the same as the drink. But I love those uh, those like just little touches where like every time he introduces himself, he says like the drink, but not spelled the same way. And just like little things like that just gives like such a sweet kindness to Michael Clark Duncan as big of a beast as he is like I, I remember watching him so much as a kid like because Sea spot run was one of my favorite movies as a kid and he's really funny in that movie like despite you know i'm sure that movie doesn't hold up anymore i just remember he was hilarious in that and then daredevil i, I loved daredevil as a kid like uh, i know that movie is very hated but i think i was 12 when that movie came out i thought it was like the sickest thing ever and i thought he was a badass as kingpin um, I, I really miss that guy and just like uh, seeing him in this movie. I think this is one of the movies that like a lot of people like keep saying like, oh, if you like Michael Clark Duncan, this is the movie to check him out for. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Stephen King also like uh, though, like I guess a lot of people always expect horror aspects from his uh, kind of books translated into movies. But uh, th even though there weren't too many horror elements, I did want to give a shout out to that electric scene against the guy who befriended the rat, essentially. That was like, I don't know if it was an actor under there, if it was like a robot or like animatronic that they used, but it was horrifying scene. And that was a really creepy moment within this movie. And uh, just seeing that brutality and just like that, the fact that it was pr all practical effects essentially was really well done and really catches you by surprise as well. Yeah, and even some of the CGI though, it didn't like age the best, like thinking specifically about like the flies that, you know, are part of John Coffey's powers, I guess, his mystic powers. Did you watch I, this in HD? Because I watched it on VHS and it looked real as heck on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> sure it did, yeah. Add a couple filters of dust and <laughs> like whatever tape residue. Like, yeah, I think anything looks good on that. Yeah. So uh, I did watch it in HD and I it didn't age the best. It's not horrible because it's like just particle effects, but it's like you think about the particle effects they have now versus 1999. I think, you know, there's probably taken leaps and strides in particle effects. Some of the stuff I can even just create on my computer is about the same level of stuff uh -huh. that they created in 1999. Okay, but, millennial. <laughs> but other than but other than that, I mean, I you know I just dislike CGI when it ages. And nah, I thought I this I wasn't you. the this wasn't the worst, obviously, but it's just like they had to use those cutting edge, you know, techniques at the time. They're not going to actually like use flies and coming out of his mouth. <laughs> that seems so unsanitary. Right. It's yeah, like Amityville point. horror to the next level. Yeah, but I was just really glad to give this a watch. Like, thanks for the suggestion. I know we kind of talked about it on our Shawshank Redemption uh, video, and I know a few people in the comments were uh, like telling us, oh, we should check out the Green Mile next. And sorry it took a bit, but we finally got around to it, and I really enjoyed it. Like, thanks so much. It was a great movie to finally watch. I own it in my collection, but I never watched it, and I'm glad I finally got to. Uh, Frank Darabont, like, I, I, I really just respect him, like, so much. Like, I've always liked all his movies that I had seen. 
or and the, just all his work in The Walking Dead, even though it was just like the first season that he worked on. But I really love that guy. And just like I hope to see a new movie from him sometime soon, whether or not it's a Stephen King adaptation or not. But yeah, it was a great watch. Uh, definitely recommend to check it out. Um, and uh, please leave a comment. Let us know what you thought about uh, the movie or our thoughts on the movie as well, too. That's a great way to help us out. And be sure to smash that like button as well. And if you guys haven't, another way to support the show is by going down below and clicking the Amazon affiliate link for the Green Mile. Also, if you aren't subscribed yet, go hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. Thank you so much. That's going to conclude this week's episode of Never Have I Ever. Tune in, tune in next week for a brand new video.